But in here, we're not supposed to lie to each other. We're supposed to be, be able to be honest with each other. What we think, what we feel, what we need, we're supposed to be able to do it because this is supposed to be family. This will be real live family, building, loving family. So lies shouldn't be a factor in there. Lies corrupt. Righteously enraged. This is an inherent right. We have collected rage over seemingly countless generations. 2,000 years worth of anger passed on from one generation to the next, to the next, to the next. Cumulative, added up. And now it's like this rage has gotten so much that folks are breaking so they're either falling for someone else's idea or trying to forget it and finding a way to suppress it to the degree that they appear sane or they're acting on it. The gray area is disappearing between where you can sort of sit in the middle and be a little angry sometimes and be a little happy the other time. That gray area is disappearing very, very rapidly. We have every right to be enraged, but it's got to be righteous. We can't just be angry just to be angry. It has to be focused. We have to know why we're angry. What it, what's the, what's the, the quote I have on the side of the bookcase, y'all, from Equal Armor? Dislike without knowledge is not dislike. Dislike without knowledge is not firm. Dislike without knowledge is not firm. We have to know. Okay? Whitey. <clears throat> Two seconds later, hugging. Because you have no idea what you're upset about. You have no idea why you're angry. And we have every right to be angry. Hmm, let me see. Let me not get angry with somebody raping my mom. Let me not get upset with somebody lynching my grandfather. Let me, let me walk around with a smile on them and pretend that that's something that I'm not supposed to be upset about and find ways to make that okay. We have every right to be angry. And no one should be sitting there telling me or anybody else, oh, you're so angry. Because you don't get it if you're saying that. You absolutely do not get it. Resilient. This is one of my most favorite words, period. Resilience. I love that word. And the main reason I love it is because I think this is one of the premier qualities of African people. To get knocked down and get back up, knocked down, get back up, knocked down, get back up, knocked down, get back up. People say, we should not be here. We should be dead. No other people has gone through what we have gone. Sure, those folks have been enslaved temporarily. Those folks have been enslaved temporarily. Those folks have been enslaved temporarily. Those folks might have got hurt in this. We have been under assault from every person, people on this planet in an attempt to remove us from existence. There is nothing that you can call out that has not happened to us. Nothing. Excuse me. That is not happening to us. This isn't, we're not talking about the past here. This is going on now. But we survive. And not only do we survive, we thrive. We build. We have visions. We have not been broken. We're through when we're broken. That's been the primary goal of other people, particularly Europeans, to break us. To break African women from their babies, to break African men from that warrior spirit. And a number of years ago, this brother said to me, crack is a success for them. It's the first time <coughs> they found where they've been able to separate African women from their children. Mm -hmm. So they've been trying all kinds of stuff, but crack is the thing. And now with the supermax prisons, where every cell is solitary confinement, 23 hours and then one hour by yourself to walk around. 
within a confined space. They're trying to break the spirit of black men, and some of them they do. Uh, Sanyika Shakur, um, who's the author of the book Monster, he was in solitary confinement for seven years. And when he got out, he said he had to learn how to talk to people again. We are a communal people. We talk to each other. So you're breaking us from our spirit. When you break a person's spirit, it's, you're through. You're through. So that's the primary goal for them, to break that spirit. Spirit. They didn't have to worry about this power of African people, this resilience, this ability to stand. I don't care what has been done to me. I don't care if you broke both of my legs. I'm crawling towards you with a spear in my hand on my knees. You're not going to put me down until you completely put me down. And then according to the African proverb, someone's going to pick up that spear and carry it forward. This, I think, is our greatest quality ever. And this is where when people talk to me and they say, oh, you know, I mean, you said look around and you see all of this chaos and all these black folks are lost and blah, blah, blah. Isn't that a sign that we have lost? No. If there's one of us, if there's just one of us, it's not over. It's not over. Of course, also a point that people need to bear in mind in terms of, oh, well, then I can sort of chill because I know this stuff and we can move forward. You know, I said earlier, there's nothing in the universe that I'm aware of that says African people cannot be re-enslaved. I, I'm not aware of that. And if someone was outside and the clouds opened up and this great big booming voice told you that, then let me know. Because I'm not, I'm not aware of that. We are at war. We're not peace, we're at war. For the survival and sanity of the African people.